You can call me being hateful here. I don't care. <laughs> this person. You know, why don't we go ahead and talk about um, the internet's favorite kid right now? Why don't we talk about this guy? So for people who don't know, uh, this kid reached the Tetris kill screen. I want to watch the moment it happened really quick. And then we get to watch... Uh, I'm not, for lack of a better term, the complete unhappy <laughs> over at Sky News. Yeah, I've heard of this. I just haven't seen it. I was, I was genuinely annoyed, but we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get to me being as annoyed as everybody else is. This is real. This is like a real moment, man. I can't feel my fingers. Dude, the adrenaline dump from being on edge has got to be crazy. To be fair, he's the only person that legitimately did this. Oh yeah, no. That's why I'm saying the, the I can't feel my fingers. The fight or flight sense just hit super hard. Guarantee it. The, the kick of adrenaline that was building and building and building. And then the moment, like the the danger of failure is past. My hands feel tingly. I, I I don't know how long he's been working towards this, but super real moment. And then uh, this happened. I'm gonna let it play, and then I'll give my opinion. Now Tetris has long been touted as a video game that just can't be beaten because it just goes on and on. <laughs> Well, 13-year-old American Willis Gibson has technically yes. proven that wrong. He beat the original Nintendo version of the game by reaching such a high level that the coding froze that left the program unable to generate any more falling blocks. As a mother, I would just say step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. Speaking of fresh air, let's get a look at the weather. Okay, here's here's my opinion on this. Um, I, I, before I get your, like let my irritation out, it sounded like just a goof joke until the beating Tetris is not a life goal. That comment comes across to me as someone who has never accomplished something that they themselves personally cared about i don't think anyone who has ever personally found satisfaction alone in something they genuinely found interest in would ever make some some type of comment like that and i don't know if that's sad or if it's something that i am saying to make fun of this woman for because she's a f <laughs> for saying that and it, it really irked me. Let people have their little victory, whatever it is. It's downplaying something that's not harmful, that's not dragging this kid down in any way. You don't know if he if his grades are suffering or if his social life is suffering or if any aspect of him is suffering in, in terms of his development. Because he's 13. Who the fuck cares? I came home every night and I played Jack and Daxter every single day for like four years because I didn't have a memory card. And my goal was to beat that game without a memory card. I had from the time I got home, so 3 p.m. after school ended, to about 10, which was my bedtime. And who cares if my grades weren't suffering? Because they weren't. I feel like you only make this type of comment after seeing someone accomplish something that they genuinely put so much time and effort in that reminds you of, and this is getting speculative, you can call me being hateful here, I don't care, fuck this person, you can call me being hateful, I don't care. I'm assuming a lot here, I'll be honest, I am. But I don't think you can make this comment without thinking that you understand a person or thinking that you are 100% confident in the path that life should should have that you follow. Be hateful. I don't think it's worth being hateful. I, I'm going to follow the, the tweet that I found where someone was talking about her and the comments were, it blew up. It was a big tweet, but it was demanding to get her, her Twitter handle and he was not giving it. And his point was 
uh, hey, dogpiling this person isn't going to solve a problem. She's already going to be aware of the hate. We don't need to direct it to her directly. This is Sky, Sky News, though. Isn't their demographics age 50 years and older? I feel like this comes from the mindset of accomplishment over money, or uh, of accomplishment equals money and family. Yeah, no, it probably does. Um, it's an Australian news organization, from my understanding. I don't know what their demographic is. I, I honestly don't care. I just hate this mindset. It's the same thing as um, I, I, my, my anime figure collection. I have spent almost as much as I've spent on my computer on anime figures. Does that devalue the the computer or anime figures? Does that devalue? Like the work I put in anywhere else in my life? I don't think it does. I'm sure she has dumb bullshit she spent money and time on as well. I don't, like, it, it, I, I just find it obnoxious to shit on this kid for making it this far. And I really hope that this doesn't eat away at him in the back of his head. Because everybody's putting a spotlight on it. And he might not have been paying attention to it. But everybody's put a spotlight on this. I, I just hope he, he isn't caught up on this because it's easy to. It's easy to let one person get to you. I know I didn't have extremely thick skin at 13. I grew up on 4chan. I grew up on DeviantArt. I grew up on Newgrounds. I grew up in the cesspits of the internet. I, I developed thick skin very quickly and I learned to not take things too seriously. And I, I, I hope he did also. I, I hope he learned that. And I grew up in those environments, but I hope he's learned how to do that already.